On the final step, the test and commission page, eight additional test steps must be completed before the motor setup is over. The system setup software can execute these tests automatically if you click on the auto tab and then click test start, or you can click on the manual tab and then manually select the parameters for each test, execute them one at a time and accept the results of each test one at a time. Let's click on the manual tab so that we can see the parameters involved in each test. The first test, detect current sensor direction, determines the direction of your current sensing and sets the motor x dot phase offset parameter. Making sure that this parameter is set properly is important because otherwise the current loop will have positive feedback and possibly damage the motor or the amplifier. The only parameter you can modify if performing the test manually is the motor number, as shown here. The second test, measure current sensor bias value, commands zero current output and reads the ADC values from the current sensors. It then modifies motor x.ia bias and motor x.ib bias to eliminate any biases on the sensors. The only parameters you can modify if performing the test manually is the motor number. The next test, the voltage six step test, moves the motor manually and tries to compute the number of counts per electrical cycle in order to determine the motor's commutation size. If you are performing this test manually, you can select the motor number, the magnitude of voltage in bits to apply to the motor, and an initial estimate of the motor's commutation size. The units of the commutation size are in the same units as the register where the motor is getting its commutation feedback. Usually this will be in the phase capped register for this channel. In my case, that's gate 3, index 0, dot chan index 2 dot phase capped dot a. The least significant bit of this register will be 8 if you are using a quadrature encoder, in which case one physical motor count would correspond to a value of 256 in this register, or 12 if you are using a sinusoidal encoder, in which case one physical motor count would correspond to a value of 4096 in this register, as dictated by the gate 3 sub i chan sub j dot a tan enna parameter. For quadrature encoders, the least significant bit is 8 because the lowest 8 bits comprise fractional data that Delta Tau's 1 over t extension algorithm produce. This algorithm accurately estimates fractional positioning from the speed of whole count transitions as the encoder moves. When using sinusoidal encoders, the arc tangent calculation yields 12 bits of fractional position, thus the LSB, or least significant bit, is 12. When reading serial encoders with gate 3 hardware, there is no fractional data, so the LSB is 0. Tune current loop iteratively computes the values of the gains used in the current loop. Motor x.ipf gain, motor x.ipb gain, and motor x.ii gain. If you are executing this test manually, you can specify the motor number, the magnitude in bits of current to apply to the motor during the test, the duration in milliseconds of the current step command used for each iteration, and the desired closed loop bandwidth in hertz of the current loop. The next step, the current six step test manually commutates the motor and tries to set motor x dot phase pause SF a parameter necessary for commutation. If you're performing this test manually, you can select the motor number, the magnitude of current in bits to apply to the motor as it is being commutated, and an initial estimate of the motor's commutation size. The units of this field are the same as the units of the commutation size field for the voltage six step test. Although both the voltage six step test and this test estimate motor x dot phase pause SF, this test is different in that it also compares the PWM commands to the measured ADC values, verifying the functionality of the ADCs and verifying whether the current loop tuning was successful. The next test, the open loop test, commands an open loop output voltage to the motor in order to verify whether a positive output command produces positive motion and a negative command produces negative motion. If you're performing this test manually, you can select the motor number, the magnitude of the voltage to command to the motor as a percentage of the maximum permissible output magnitude that motor x.maxdac specifies, 
the duration in milliseconds, which specifies how long to command voltage to the motor, and the positive and negative directions individually, and finally, the number of iterations. Each iteration consists of a positive and negative pair of voltage commands of the same magnitude. The next test, the phase reference search, performs a test to locate the rotor's position in order to maximize torque output from the motor. If you're performing this test manually, you can select the motor number, the phasing method, whether it is the stepper method or the foreguess method, the magnitude in bits of the current to command the motor's phases when phasing, and the amount of time in milliseconds to spend searching for the rotor's position. Set the phasing method to 1 to use the stepper method, and set it to 2 to use the foreguess method. The stepper phasing method is very reliable and accurate and can be used in almost all applications except for those that cannot tolerate motion on phasing. The next step, tune servo loop, will excite the motor and attempt to theoretically estimate servo loop gains in order to control the motor. This will usually tune the motor well enough to at least move it with a jog command, but performing additional interactive tuning to refine the tuning is recommended. If you're performing this test manually, you can select the motor number, the magnitude of the voltage to command to the motor as a percentage of the maximum permissible output magnitude that MotorX.MaxDeck specifies. For the auto-tuning magnitude, you can use the same magnitude that produced a proper open loop response in the open loop test. The duration in milliseconds, which specifies how long to command voltage to the motor, the minimum acceptable distance moved in motor counts before the estimation completes, and whether to tune for velocity mode, if this parameter is set to 1, or torque mode, if it is set to 0. I will now perform each test manually in order that you can see how each test looks when they finish successfully. First, detect current sensor direction. We have already specified motor number 3, so click test start. We observe that some current is commanded to the phases of the motor, and then the ADCs are measured. We obtain a phase offset value and a PWM scale factor value for motor 3 as a result. We'll click Accept to accept these settings. Next, measure current sensor bias value. We want to select motor 3, and then click Test Start. PMEC observes the current values read on the ADCs and averages them over time and then it corrects IA bias and IB bias with the negatives of those averages. Click accept to keep the changes. Next is the voltage six step test. For the parameters I want to select motor number of three, a magnitude of approximately 3000 it would be something like uh, 3 volts being applied to the motor. And then I'm estimating the commutation size to be 256,000. This is because I have two pole pair motor, 2,000 counts per revolution. So I know that I have 1,000 counts per electrical cycle. And since the least significant bit is 8 here, that means I multiply 1,000 by 2 to the 8, so I will have a commutation size of 256,000. Click Test Start. The motor should manually commutate at this point. Through one full electrical cycle, Then we see the results. It's computed the phase pause SF, the phase position scale factor, appropriately, and we can click accept to keep those changes. The next test is tune current loop. We'll select motor 3, a magnitude of about 3,000 bits, which should correspond to uh, roughly 3 amps commanded into the motor's phases, a duration of 100 milliseconds and a desired bandwidth of 300. So for most DC brushless motors, 
a bandwidth of 300 to 450 hertz gives really nice performance. If you're using something more like a voice coil motor or uh, something that can accept a much higher bandwidth, you can specify something like uh, 2 kilohertz here, for example. So we'll click Test Start. So PMAC is iterating through a few different iterations of gains, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. And we see the resulting current loop step looks extremely nice. The desired current is shown here with a blue line. The actual current response is in red. Actual current shoots very quickly up to the uh, desired current in just a few milliseconds has uh, little to no overshoot, zero steady state error, and it rises up to uh, our command of 3000. So we are happy with this response. You can see the gains that the auto tuner selected in this portion of the window right here, and we can click accept to keep those changes. Next is the current six step test. We'll select motor number three, magnitude of about 3,000 bits again, which gives us about uh, 3 amps commanded to the motor's phases, and a commutation size again of 256,000, which I explained in the voltage six-step test portion of this uh, tutorial. Then we click Test Start, and we should observe the motor again commutates through an electrical cycle. You should see it physically moving. If our current loop tuning succeeded and if our ADCs are working properly and we find that it computed the same phase position scale factor as in the voltage six-step test. So this was a success and we can click accept to move on. Next is the open loop test. Again for motor 3 we'll select a magnitude of about 7% of our maximum permissible output select a duration of 100 milliseconds for each iteration, and then two iterations. Click Test Start, and we should see the, the motor move positively for a positive command, and negatively for a negative command. We see the result of the window here. Our open loop command is indicated by a red line, so during a positive command, we have a positive velocity response, as indicated by the blue line. And during a negative command, we see a negative velocity response, as indicated by the blue line. So we get a sawtooth sort of shape for each iteration. This is exactly the result we're looking for, so we'll click Accept and move on. If you did not see this sort of shape, it could be caused by a number of things. You can try phasing your motor again. You can try changing your encoder decode direction in step five in the interactive feedback step from clockwise to counterclockwise. Or maybe you missed a, a setting in a previous step, so you can go through those again. Or perhaps your wiring is incorrect. You can check your encoder wiring or your motor wiring. Next is the phase reference search. We'll select motor number three and the phasing method we will set to 1 for the stepper method. Select a magnitude of about 3000 bits, which should correspond to about 3 amps, and then a phase search time of, let's say, 500 milliseconds. And then click Test Start. The test passed very quickly, and it generated some phasing parameters in motorx.phasefinding DAC and phasefinding time shown here for us. We can click Accept to keep those changes. Lastly, we will tune the servo loop. So select motor 3, use a magnitude of about 7% of the maximum permissible output, have an excitation duration of about 250 milliseconds, minimum move size of, let's say, 500 counts, a quarter revolution, and we are not using velocity mode, we are using torque mode. So we'll click test start. PMAC should move the motor and then estimate the gain parameters. We see the response to a step move here. The desired position is in red. It's an instantaneous commanded position. And then the actual position is in blue. This tuning is probably good enough to get the motor 
moving with a jog command, for example, but you can see that there are some problems with it. It has some steady state error. The rise time could probably improve. It is a little bit too damped. Uh, so at this point, you definitely want to perform an interactive tuning to improve the tuning and optimize your gains. But this should be good enough for your motor setup, at least for jogging purposes, and you can do the interactive tuning later. Please see the interactive tuning video for more details on how to do that, or check the Power PMEC user's manual. We can click accept to keep the auto-tuned gains for now. So at this point, the motor is fully functional. We haven't done the interactive tuning, the fine tuning yet but the motor is moving and we want to save the parameters required to get the motor moving. To do that, we can go back to our main IDE view, expand the configuration folder, right-click the configuration folder, and click Generate Configuration File. You can name this something like Motor 3 Working. Hit Enter. This will generate a file containing only the parameters that have been changed from default. So this is a nice way you can keep track of all the changes that the system setup software made in order to get your motor working. Then you can copy these parameters later into, for example, your global definitions file where you keep all of your motor setup settings and then you can keep them for later download.